In this video, we're going to be looking at the anatomy of the tarsal tunnel, as well as doing a brief introduction to tarsal tunnel syndrome. Eventually, we'll be covering the special tests used in the diagnosis of tarsal tunnel syndrome, so keep an eye out for that video. So first of all, what is it? Well, the tarsal tunnel is a space created between the medial malleolus of the tibia, that's this first black dot, and the medial tubercle of the calcaneus, that's this second black dot. It exists on the medial side of both ankles, as you can see right here, and it provides a passageway for structures that are really on the posterior side of the tibia and the fibula to cross the ankle joint medially and end up in the foot. And those include muscle tendons, vessels, and nerves. We'll get to what those are in just a minute, but let's first talk about the boundaries of the tarsal tunnel. So we've already hit the superior and inferior boundaries. The superior boundary is the medial malleolus of the tibia right here. The inferior boundary is the medial tubercle of the calcaneus. And actually, the superior and inferior boundaries right here provide attachment points for the roof of the tarsal tunnel, which is this green-looking tissue called the flexor retinaculum. The floor of the tarsal tunnel is really just bone. It's going to be the medial surfaces of the lower tibia right here. The talus, which is mostly covered up, and the calcaneus. And then the superior and inferior boundaries right here really provide attachment points for the roof of the tarsal tunnel, which is this green colored tissue called the flexor retinaculum. And it's actually the flexor retinaculum, by virtue that it's a roof, that converts this structure into a tunnel. And as we mentioned, it provides a passageway for these structures right here as they're going between the posterior lower leg and the foot. So, what are these structures? Well, you can learn them with this little acronym, Tom, Dick, and Very Naughty Harry. This actually gives the order of these structures from anterior to posterior as they cross through the tarsal tunnel. The first is T for Tom. The T is for tibialis posterior tendon. So you can see right here, posterior tibial or tibialis posterior, if you're being proper. That's the tendon of that muscle right there. Remember, that's the major subtalar inverter of the ankle joint. The D for Dick is D in digitorum, so flexor digitorum longus tendon. That one comes next. It goes through the tarsal tunnel directly posterior to that of tibialis posterior. The A and the V here are vessels. You might guess that A is artery, V is for vein. So you can see those in red and blue here directly posterior to the tendon of flexor digitorum longus. And those are the posterior tibial artery in red and the posterior tibial veins in blue. Now if you notice here, there's actually two blue vessels. Those are actually both the posterior tibial vein. Remember sometimes veins come in sets of two. A good example of that would be the brachial vein in the arm. It comes in sets of two, but usually you talk about it as if it's one unit. Okay? Um, in general, though, there's some genetic variation in this, so we're just going to learn that the artery comes first and then the vein. Coming next is the N for naughty. That's going to be the tibial nerve, N for nerve. You can see that one is coming through directly posterior to the artery and the vein. So there's the tibial nerve. And then finally, we have hairy, H. The H is for helicis, flexor helicis longus tendon. That's the posterior most structure that goes through the tarsal tunnel. So going through these, T is tibialis posterior, D is flexor digitorum longus, A and V are the posterior tibial artery and vein, N is the nerve, tibial nerve, and H is flexor helicis longus tendon. One thing also to keep in mind is remember that the muscle bellies of the relevant muscles are way up here. You can't even see them. Okay? What's going through the tarsal tunnel is really just the tendons, not the muscles themselves, so keep that in mind. Now, there can be damage or other issues with any of these structures that are crossing through the tarsal tunnel into the foot. However, when we talk about tarsal tunnel syndrome, we're talking about it specifically with the tibial nerve. So it's a condition in which there is irritation to the tibial nerve as it crosses through the tarsal tunnel. That irritation could be mechanical, in other words, a compression, a laceration. It could be chemical, in which you have inflammation in the area. Okay, so some kind of irritation to the tibial nerve as it's going into the foot through the tarsal tunnel. Now because you're causing irritation of a nerve, tarsal tunnel syndrome is going to manifest as numbness or other kinds of paresthesias, 
in the foot, right? So the basic clinical presentation you might see is burning pain at the sole of the foot. This might be aggravated by standing, walking, or other kinds of weight-bearing activities. It can even be aggravated by subtalar eversion. And why would eversion aggravate this? Well, if you evert at the subtalar joint, you actually stretch the medial side of the ankle. And if this nerve is already irritated and you're stretching it further, that's going to further exacerbate these symptoms. Okay? Also, it may manifest as numbness or tingling at the base of the foot. Now again, when we're talking about aggravation of this nerve, we're thinking about things that either cause inflammation to this nerve, so chemical irritation, or things that can potentially compress this nerve. So if something gets in the tarsal tunnel and takes up space, well, then it has the potential to compress that nerve. So here's some very common causes of tarsal tunnel syndrome. So flat feet or fallen arches. The technical term for flat feet is pes planus. So somebody with pes planus has what they call pronated feet. And specifically, it's pronation at the subtalar joint. So when somebody has excessive subtalar pronation, they also have excessive subtalar eversion. And remember, we just said that eversion stretches the medial aspect of the ankle, therefore stretches the contents in the tarsal tunnel, in particular, that tibial nerve. So that's going to lengthen the distance that the tibial nerve must travel as it crosses into the foot, and it causes a chronic stretch on that nerve. And a chronic stretch on that nerve can irritate it. Also, somebody could have an ankle sprain. An ankle sprain is going to be associated with swelling and edema. So fluid may build up in this area right here. And if fluid builds up, it takes up space. And just simply taking up space can cause mechanical compression of that tibial nerve. Additionally, if you have an inflammatory response in the area, that inflammation can also chemically irritate the tibial nerve as well. Also, diseases such as arthritis or diabetes mellitus in these cases, you can still get swelling, but really with diabetes mellitus, remember that those intrinsic foot muscles that help to maintain that arch, they become extremely weak due to the nerve damage in the foot over time. And so when those intrinsic foot muscles become weak, the arch collapses and you end up with secondary pes planus due to diabetes mellitus. And what happened with pes planus? Well, we get excessive subtalar pronation, which means excessive subtalar eversion and excessive stretch of that tibial nerve. And also local varicose veins, ganglion cysts, swollen tendons, bone spurs, those all take up space. They can all create some impingement on that tibial nerve. So hopefully that makes sense. And in the next video, we'll be covering three special tests that are used in physical therapy to confirm or to refute the presence of tarsal tunnel syndrome. And those are number one, Tunnell sign, number two, the dorsiflexion eversion test, and number three, the triple compression test. So we'll be looking at all three of those in the next video, so make sure to watch out for that one. But hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the anatomy of the tarsal tunnel and also the basic pathophysiology of tarsal tunnel syndrome. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.